Hey, Rachel. Hey, Kay. I saw you posted some photos of a, of a winter storm or something. How was that? There was a lot of snow, and it was just a lot of fun. Did, did you uh, make uh, snow sculptures of genius? No, that didn't happen. But um. we did go on a snow adventure. The girl that I play with, she likes to pretend like she's lived out in the snow for months. She was pretending to be? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So it was like a little, like a playing roles or something. Uh huh. Yeah, she likes to be like a wise sage in a winter scape with a stick, and she has a really. She has a husband. So basically, her husband is modeled after her father. Yes. Oh, that sounds great. I mean, isn't that the case most of the time? Yeah, I think so. The interesting thing to think about is, was the was the husband dreaming of a snow adventure too? The real husband or the pretend one? I'm both of them because I, I want to get you know. It seems like your friend was having a lot of fun, but was the guy dreaming of fun in the office, like staring at the computer <laughs> on Facebook and like wanting to make a like build a snowman and you know have fun with the carrot and everything else. So、mm -hmm. I got everything set up for eight thirty, and I'm feeling a little nervous too. Yeah, I was feeling nervous too because I was. I'm calling you at eight thirty. Eight thirty is a weird time. Thanks, and <laughs> and also maybe it's just in our head. I. How do you think it would work different with people that already know each other? That that's a good question, right? Well, even with people that you know, you don't know how they're gonna interact. You know, like you don't know what they're gonna do. You know, this guy. It was like very fucking cool, just like doing all kinds of crazy shit. So maybe that's why it's better with strangers. It's much better, I guess, to answer your question with strangers. I was thinking about like, what if you start with a group of strangers, then each time that you guys did it, then it would turn into what asking someone for the time really is, right? Like because it would become like. This is what we do instead of an interruption、so like、a or a, huh? I went to go get a piece of pizza, and started to feel like going back into my normal self, but my feeling was to like be a jabberbox with the pizza guy, which isn't what I do.、Mm -hmm. But did you ask the guy to give you a a pizza shaped、uh, like、uh, some kind of、uh, like shape? Like a tree or like a cloud, <laughs> because you know, like the boring shape of a triangle. Like, did you try to get some kind of、uh, like alter the form of a pizza? I didn't. So you stayed inside the triangle, but so the the difference was the interaction with the pizza guy. Yeah. You know, like how people go to church. Mhm.、Mm、all the Christian people that you know they enter the the house of God. When people go to a bank, or like you know, you have like two bankers in a suit or whatever. So then you know they're talking about deposits or you know whatever. It, it, it doesn't. I mean, it's very fragile, right? So I mean, I thought that that was that's the first time that I'm thinking about it in that way, you know. But back to winter time. How's your winter fashion? My wish. My winter fashion. Yeah. I have a yellow and white striped stocking cap,、uh -huh. and my significant other has a red and blue stocking cap. Excellent. Those hats really set the tone. Mine has a pom pom, and his has a button. We have to walk the dog a lot in the winter, so、mm -hmm. he wears. He started wearing these snow pants. That are bright red that I used to wear in college. See, that's very sexy. Like he's taking <laughs> some like feminine, you know, you know, like because you have like the very boring story, right? It's like a, a, a female spends the night at the guy's house, and then in the morning she's feeling sexy, and then she puts on his V-neck. I hate that story. It's so boring, you know. <laughs> it's it's much sexier when like the guy is taking, you know. You know, he spends the night after they meet balls and and pasta, and have a nice glass of red wine. In the morning, he he puts on these winter red pants 
to, you know, go through the Midwest winter. That's a much sexier, like a nice story, you know? But, uh, yeah, let me tell you about, I, I think that winter, I mean, I think it's the sexiest uh, season of all. Because, like, if you think about it, like, you know, sexy is like some kind of like um, a word taken from sex. So it's not like sex, right? Sexy. So it like deals with like fantasy, right? Uh -huh. it, and uh, if you're like on the subway or like if you're like somewhere in public, all these people are like completely dressed from their neck to their toes, right? Mm -hmm. And and in the summertime when this guy would have been like, you know, like an oven tattoo or like, you know, uh, not the perfect body shape or whatever, you can imagine, you know, like fantasy takes over and you could start imagining how sexy these people look under their clothes. Because, you know, like the, the brutality of, of summertime is like you have these people that are wearing these things And, you know, it's like right in your face, you know? Yeah. Where in the wintertime, there's no crocodiles, there's no grizzly just coming out. And mm -hmm. it's like, you can, you know, the fantasy takes over. Oh, another thing that I was going to tell you, um, there's that blog. I'm going to send you, like, um, a little link of all these crazy tattoos. That, you know, like, people get, like, the Chinese or the Japanese tattoo? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that they think that means one thing, but it actually either means gibberish or means nothing. Mm -hmm. Or it means, like, the opposite or something like that. So there's, like, you know, this person got, like, a tattoo that in the wintertime they could, you know, cover up, you know. But in the summer it's, like, completely in people's face. So he, they thought that it means uh, freedom, you know, which is, like, a very noble thing. You get, like, a tattoo which means freedom. But it actually meant free, like uh, free of charge. You know what I'm saying? Well, what was what was the goal of doing it in the first place? I think because they lost in my mind, like in an alleyway that was just brick forever up. It was very minimal, like in a maze of brick and pink. That's happened before. Um, but anyway, what about uh? Have you been in the studio? I have been. We made a stage and a, where there was like a sitting couch for people to come and sit. It was an experiment and there was just like people sitting around and I met this guy and he was wearing this like beautiful western shirt that had this snap panel on the front of it. It was plaid but the snap panel you could turn it the other direction to give a different shape a different design. It was like an inside out, mix it up type of shirt. So like I feel like I've seen it in different places so I feel like maybe you could see it somewhere. Like the teeth are being like hundreds of teeth in a row. Like for instance people were just posting pictures of themselves on swings. What the shit is going on? Like where are all these people? It was cheap too. It was 10 bucks. You could stay there for five hours. Whoa. I was there for I was there for five hours. It's like an old uh, farm space, and then this like ladder that's like in 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 the ground, but it sticks out. Mhm. Mm that girl used to live with me. She used to be my roommate. Really? Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's a small world. Yeah, Lauren. I used to live with Lauren. Have you participated in that residency? I applied to be an artist assistant and so oh. I did go out there. I was an assistant to a ceramic artist who came from Japan and wow. then befriended this girl who came over on a cargo boat from Sweden and fell madly in love with her. I just thought she was the most amazing beautiful person I've ever met. I like driving out there you're like in the middle of nowhere so in this like house that's falling apart around you it was beautiful and insane wow what if you flip it and you make it like this absurdist thing where you like dress up in a suit and you know you promise like well that could work I don't think anything sounds better than that that's pretty good who There's a show right now. I've not seen it, but I heard about it. They came to our town. And apparently if this guy comes, people who watch the show get super excited and will dress up in costumes. 
and try to get on TV. And he promises if you invest in his program that you're going to make millions. And I think what I saw was like all the people who had lost everything because they believed in him. So that's what you should do with art, like become like a art, like flipping, flipping art, call it like something catchy, like flipping art, 1-800 flipping art, and wear a suit, and that's it. Maybe, maybe if you um, will make me a theme song, I'll do it. Oh, but I think I'm the perfect guy, you know, to to come up with a nice little catchy, catchy tune. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe more so starting a jingle collaboration. But we should be like a jingle, jingle collective that also does jenga on the weekend. (laughs) So we'll be like jingling and playing jenga, which which will make us more marketable, you know? In, you know, where, you know, What's the thing that they say, like 10,000 hours or something like that? After 10,000 hours? Yeah, of, of practicing your craft, you, you have acquired a certain master level, you know, of, of whatever you do, of, of playing guitar, uh, programming on the computer, or, you know, whatever you do. 10,000 hours of practice is, I guess, the average that it takes for you to become, a, not like a genius master, but, you know, like an, like you can't skip those ten thousand hours. You can't. Yeah. There's no performance before that. Is that true? Yeah. It it happens after actually being. His influence is all over the place. So, for you, where you're gonna take the void? I can't take the void anywhere. You know, you could only you know work within your perimeters as a human being. Um, so if. I can't take the void itself anywhere, but I could take the the idea somewhere. So with my megalomania of a, you know, I think I'm a genius, so I'm going to make this beautiful painting of a meatball. And, you know, you're like, wow, I'm painting a meatball, and this is the biggest meatball. It's like a trampoline. Uh, You're you, and then the jumping up and down is the relationship, you know, the art that you're making. Do you want to keep focusing on that, that idea? Yeah, yeah. For me, uh, the question, you know, like the question of nothingness and just naming it and dealing with it is, has so much material that, you know, I can't, I can't make stories. For me, there's so much material just in the relationship with nothing. I'm unable to, you know, jump from some, you know, to something else. Like Harry Potter, a lot of people like Harry Potter and stuff. You know, I can't think of Harry Potter because I'm I'm much more fascinated, you know, with this trampoline. It was great talking to you, and, uh, you know, we'll talk to each other again. Sweet. Take care. Take care. All right, Rachel. Have a good night. You too. Bye.